Welcome to the U.S. Women's National Team Victory Tour presented by AT&T. Today we come to you live from Century Link Field in Seattle, Washington as 2015 FIFA World Cup champion, the United States getting set to take on Brazil. Teams walking out here at the beautiful Century Link Field. Glenn Davis alongside Julie Fatty and what a moment it is for Seattle to welcome their heroes here as world champions. And what a moment for the players to come to one of the great soccer cities in this country and be able to go all over the United States and have that moment where you can say thank you to your fans. Very interesting night here with Brazil in town as well. More on that a little bit later, but this is really just about the celebration tour continuing tonight. Also, a side note, the 195th appearance for Shannon Box, and tonight this will be her final game. And you'd love to see Shannon Box getting the love from the fans. I've seen it on Twitter all day. What a special player. When we come back, national anthems, the kickoff is next from Seattle, Washington. Welcome back to the U.S. Women's National Team Victory Tour presented by AT&T. The fifth of ten matches, the first of two against Brazil. These teams will meet again in Orlando on Sunday. The player introductions here are just being met with raucous applause here at CenturyLink Field. Only the third appearance here in Seattle for the U.S. Women's National Team, and their last appearance was all the way back in 2002. Amazing applause for Carly Lloyd and Hope Solo. Shannon Box playing her final game as a gold medalist and a world champion tonight here in Seattle. The United States of America! Time now to listen in to the national anthems. Starting with Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats for the national anthem of Brazil followed by the playing of the Star Spangled Banner.
Beautiful TIFO being unveiled here at CenturyLink Field, and uh, the passion and emotion can be felt in this building here tonight. The United States getting set to take on Brazil. And welcome in, everybody. I'm Glenn Davis alongside me. She's former U.S. Women's National Team star and midfielder Julie Foudy. Now, look, we did the Haiti game. They have played Costa Rica. This is the fifth out of ten games on this victory tour. But tonight, the competition gets ratcheted up against Brazil, number seven in the world. Yeah, you were looking at four games in the first four games of the victory tour that were 8-0 wins, two of them, two of them by five goal margins. So finally, finally, the U.S. is thinking, all right, we've got a game here, and it's no longer celebration, it's preparation. Olympic trials, Olympic qualifiers are only three and a half months away, and that's what Jill Ellis is focused on. Fans have come out to see the superstars here tonight, and they will see them. Carly Lloyd, Alex Morgan are two players that are in kind of very differing places right now. Yeah, Carly Lloyd, we saw how much success she had at the World Cup, in particular that hat trick in the final. And she really has just carried that momentum into this victory to her last two games, another two hat tricks all over the place but what they're going to want to see with the u.s team tonight is can they get alex morgan more confident up front she's had a year of injury she had surgery right after the world cup on that knee again trying to get healthy and she's just not putting away goals she typically would put away and they're going to try and get her into rhythm U.S. starting lineup under Jill Ellis, a 4-2-3-1, and of course, all eyes are going to be on Shannon Box tonight. Shannon Box in that 195th international appearance, and it will be her last for the U.S. And on that right side, Crystal Dunn, another player who's done well in this victory tour, was the last person cut from that World Cup team. Can she do it against a good team like Brazil? All right, the stars are not on the on the U.S. side here tonight. Five-time FIFA World Player of the Year, Marta, is in the house, Julia. And you see all the individual 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 accolades Marta has won as that five-time World Player of the Year, but Brazil has never won a World Cup or an Olympics, and now they get the chance hosting him in Rio, of course, this next summer. Tactical lineup for Brazil, their head coach Fadal, a 4-4-2 here tonight. And that's a, a familiar tandem up front that people are used to seeing who've watched Brazil. Marta will float all over the place. We've seen her playing a lot more defensively in this system, and Christiane will stay up high for Brazil. Keep an eye on Andressa, number five, who can play make uh, in behind those two great strikers. The United States taking the field. Wonderful moment there between Marta and Shannon Box. Now, you'll notice Shannon Box is wearing her married name on the back, Spearman, in homage to her husband, Aaron Spearman. U.S. training yesterday. Shannon Box, very loose, very excited about tonight. United States leads the series all-time against Brazil, 25-3-4. And, and the United States remember some of those classic uh, Brazilian finals in the Olympics. But last December, Brazil, down in Brazil, beat the U.S. and drew with them. Good look there at Formiga. And there is Marta. Full of tricks and flicks. Brazil in the yellow, the United States in blue. Your referee tonight, Katja Koroleva. Game on here in Seattle. The roars of the crowd. And then Shannon Box getting an early touch. Julie Johnston now. And Brazil is motivated, talking to to them yesterday at their training session. Uh, not happy with getting eliminated in the round of 16, Julie. So it's a team here that's motivated and understands the opportunity that's uh, availed to them here tonight in Seattle. Yeah, so disappointing at the, at the World Cup last summer to go out so early against an Australian team who had never won in that knockout stage. Official surface here in Seattle. Thirty one players called in for the U.S. and Jill Ellis, all 23 from the Women's World Cup. And of course, added to that was NWSL MVP Crystal Dunn. But we'll talk a little bit about some of the new names uh, that have been in training for Jill Ellis. Already Brazil with that player, Andresa Alves, off on the sideline getting attention. They're down a player at the moment. Marta got a touch. Two was Fabiana. And 
this is Becky Sauerbrunn. What a World Cup she had, Julie, in tandem with Julie Johnston. Kelly O'Hara now. Let's take a look at our Continental Tire Analyst Corner with Julie Fowler. Two of the things we'll be looking at today, especially from the U.S., the key is them getting that outside midfielder attacking and getting forward so that you have the Martas of Brazil and some of those players that love to get forward on the Brazilian side having to defend. That chess match is going to be an interesting one. And then I think the thing we talked about in the open, need more production from that front line for the United States. Here's Marta now, picks up a ball deep in the U.S. Half of the field is going to earn the game's first corner. Johnston cut the cross out, but the mobile... Uh, Marta can show up in a lot of different areas. Back on the field now is Andresa Alves, the 22 year old. Andresa, at 20 years of age, one of the rising young talents of Brazil to take the corner as Hope Solo organizes things. U.S. Uh, defending the corner. Zonally, it's Brazil up 1 0. Spectacular start for Brazil. Monica has headed at home, only her second international goal, and Brazil has killed off the start of this party. Hope looked like she was going to come for that ball. She hesitates, hesitates, thinks about it, and then drops back. And Brazil just getting in that little seam. And you can see three front players for the United States zoning on that six. And this is the danger of the zone as you pop into the middle of that. Gets over Sauerbrunn. And what a nice finish for Brazil. Just like what happened in December for the United States. They go down early against Brazil. Speak to that delivery, uh, Julie. The delivery there put in by Andressa uh, in a great area. Beautiful because it's driven in, and so it makes that goalkeeper have to make that decision quickly. Hope decides not to come. What a start for Brazil, and a bit of a wake up call here in Seattle. The celebration uh, and all the feel good goes out the window with that goal for the moment. Becky Sauerbrunn now. Brazil again. Cristiano. Formiga. Brazil getting players into the box here in numbers. And this will trickle to Hope Solo, who will hold it on her feet. But this is the, the exact type of game you want with the Olympic qualifiers right around the, the, the corner. Three and a half months away, they're in February. You want players taking on, going at you. I mean, those 8-0 games you saw earlier in the victory tour, you're not getting much out of those games. Crystal Dunn knocked it to Carly Lloyd, knocks it back now to Julie Johnston. Becky Sauerbrunn, 30-year-old, who just won an MWSL title again for the second consecutive year with FC Kansas City. Klingenberg trying to join in the attack, steered away by Brazil. The U.S. will get a corner here. Thrusting forward from the left back position, Megan Klingenberg. Rapino to take it. The starting point uh, to attack this cross outside the 18 in a lot of areas. Swung in. Punched away. Luciano. With two hands, the 28 year old. She had three shutouts in the group stages for Brazil in Canada. Good work from Morgan Bryan to win it back for the U.S. Shannon Box, Sauerbrunn, Carly Lloyd. The outside of her foot pass is cut out. Good energetic response here. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the interesting thing Coach Ellis is looking at, is how does the U.S. respond to that early goal? It's a touch that makes it kind of favorable here for Rapino. And these little moments of adversity are so telling. Should be another corner for the U.S. 
Wilkin Bryant flying into the attack from a bit of a deeper position. We all know how important her input was in Canada. Second corner for the U.S. Rapino to take it. Seventh minute. Julie Johnston lining up right in the middle, getting in the mix this one. Stayed much deeper on that first corner kick. Rapino has beaten one, can't get the cross in. Coming out to block it was Andresa Alves, the 22-year-old. Megan Rapino, two goals, two assists in the 2015 FIFA World Cup. Offside flag is up. Brazil has been to seven World Cups. And as Julie mentioned, knocked out by Australia. You look at Jill Ellis, who after winning the World Cup was rewarded with a multi-year contract extension in August and is up for the FIFA World Coach of the Year. Only the eighth coach in U.S. history. Crystal Dunnett, the NWSL MVP. Dunn will get a cross in. Trying to get in there was Carly Lloyd. This is exactly where they want to get Crystal Dunn. Faced up out wide with some space and the ball at her feet because she can do things on the ball. Just getting a little window. A little bit late for Carly Lloyd on that near post run. If she's making that near post run earlier, that could be a goal for the United States. But that's what Crystal Dunn brings to a game. It's Carly Lloyd trying to get in there. But the U.S. after conceding now have up their tempo, controlling possession here in Seattle. Johnston to Sauerberg. Tandem they were in the World Cup. Klingenberg, offside flag is up. Morgan just offside and doesn't agree with it. And Alex is going to be tiptoeing on this line. She's just leaning in. Got those you just want them to say, let's let's go with the offensive side of things and just call that on. She may have been a hair offside, but that's too close. I'm with you. Give them the benefit of the doubt there. But this is, they're playing a high line, Brazil is, and Alex Morgan is going to constantly be using her pace to try and tiptoe along that back line. It's a dangerous system to play if you're going to play high with a player as speedy as Alex Morgan. Crystal Dunn. O'Hara drops it short, flicked on by Morgan. Lloyd tried to get there. Now let's talk a little bit about Crystal Dunn because this is a huge moment for her. It's one thing to do it against Haiti. It's another to do it against Brazil. And when, when you talk to her after the World Cup and after she's gone through the heartache of being cut from that team, there's this refreshing energy and confidence to her that I didn't see before. She said, look, I, I took it as, all right, let's go. I didn't make that team. I, I was close to making that team. And then, of course, we saw the season she had with the NWSL, MVP, league leader in goals. Carly Lloyd has had two consecutive hat tricks. Here's Crystal Dunn again, who's causing real problems down this right side. Cross to the far post, Rapino's there. She called Alex Morgan off it and did not make good contact with the volley. But again, the danger of Crystal Dunn with the pace she can get in. This is something the United States is going to want to see all night. Great ball across. I think Pino actually could have taken that one with her head with some velocity if she attacked that one. She was swinging for the fences there, though. She was. Into the box. Driving in there with real pace was Morgan Bryan. Seemingly getting forward a little bit more here tonight and causing some problems late. You know, and, and it's interesting because she's usually Morgan Bryan holding and staying, but with Boxy playing more of that role, Bryan is taking off the ball and chain and getting forward. 
Another corner for Rapino now. Bends it in towards the near post. Brazil got ahead on it. O'Hara now. And we see it out of play. Crystal Dunn. Gets another great cross, and the glancing header just goes wide. It would have been spectacular for Morgan. Crystal Dunn is wreaking havoc down this right side. Nice first touch, just gets a little window of space when that defender bites, and this time the U.S. makes that near post run. Alex Morgan, that's a, that's a difficult cross because it's coming away from the goal, behind her a little bit. She does well on that one, that's unlucky. One goal in the 2015 World Cup for the 26-year-old Alex Morgan, who has been hampered by some real injury problems. Brian does a great job to recover there, and it's Sauerbrunn now, who flares it out wide to Rapino. She cushions it down. And he's trying to pick out Morgan and Carly Lloyd into the path of the pass. It'll be a free kick, United States. Good response by the United States, though. Taking on, getting in line. Something that was lacking at the World Cup. Well, maybe that Brazilian goal kind of symbolizes, all right, time now to put this in overdrive a little and begin to think about the Olympics and CONCACAF qualifying, which comes up in the near future. Flipped into the box and it's flipped on. <laughs> Beautiful look at Carly Lloyd. 16 goals in 21 games this year. 16 minutes it took to get a hat trick in a World Cup final. I still shake my head in awe when you think about that. that. Was 16 minutes. That's crazy. Including the goal from the halfway line. Right. I mean, one other person has produced a hat trick in a World Cup final. And that would be on the men's side. Jeff Hurst with England when they beat Germany 4-2 in 1966. Here comes Brazil now. This one bent in and collected cleanly by Hope Solo. Plays right here in Seattle with the Seattle Reign. Chance from Christian. Christian Formiga, it seems like they've been here for us. <laughs> they have. Formiga's sixth World Cup this past summer. Sixth. You know, we were trying to do the math on that. She's and she's you'd think she'd be 40 at least. She's 37. Shoot, by today's standards, she's got another couple World Cups in her, Glenn. It's amazing what the human body can do. 143 appearances for Formiga with 22 goals. Joined the senior national team in 95. Here comes Brazil again, and trying to get on the end of it was Christian. Again, she was. There is Formiga. And I thought she was the MVP for Brazil at, at that last World Cup. She was phenomenal. All over the place, offensively, defensively. And you just didn't see the same Marta that we're accustomed to seeing. It was a more industrious Marta at the World Cup. It's the first time the United States has been trailing here since March 4th. And that goes all the way back to the Algrove Cup against Norway. In some ways, I wonder if Jill Ellis is going, you know what, this is a great challenge for us tonight that we've conceded early to see what sort of response we have. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think so, because then you see which players are going to step up. Morgan flicks it on. came in there to break that play up. Liga hit a bit of a lazy ball, but Morgan Bryan's going to get called for the foul. 16 minutes in, it's Brazil with a 1-0 lead. Monica, the goal scorer. Good look at Vidal, who is the 59-year-old head coach of Brazil said, quote, I never imagined to be the head coach of the Brazilian women's team after spending all his time in the men's game. He managed countless teams in Brazil. 
players like Kaká, Rivaldo, and known to be an organized coach, like Adunga on the men's side. Nine years of age. Brazil's last match was September 19th, losing to France 2 to 1. Poliana scoring the goal for Brazil. Big switch of play from Shannon Box and a good one. O'Hara's ball cut out. Here is Marta now. Taken off it by Morgan Bryant. Good work from Bryant. Tries to siphon a pass through the offside flag. Is up on Morgan again. Crowd doesn't realize the lineswoman has raised her flag. But Alex Morgan is getting closer and closer to breaking in behind the Brazilian defense. Formiga. Baliana. This is Fabiana now who gets uh, stripped by Rapina. Nice ball from Rapina. Carly Lloyd. Shannon Box wins it back. Who, by the way, has the 11 most caps in team history. You and I did the Haiti game. This has got a much, much different feel here tonight. There is there, a nice edge in the air here, especially after Brazil getting the game's first goal. Especially when you have a Haiti team full of 16 and 17 year olds. <laughs> Christian. Megan Rapino had a great quote. She said, if you get complacent, then you're going to get surpassed on this U.S. women's national team. And she went on to talk about how it's a tough environment all the time, but that's what makes this team great. So many good young players out there, too, and you're getting a sampling with the extra players Coach Ellis brought in this trip. Poliana's well, cross is blocked. Klingenberg does a wonderful job of just shielding that out for a goal kick for the United States. Megan Klingenberg, one of the unsung heroes. MLS Soccer Sunday presented by Audi continues with Decision Day. We'll have full coverage of the race for the Supporter Shield and for playoff positioning. Adrian Healy, Taylor Twellman will be on site in Kansas City as Sporting Kansas City hosts the LA Galaxy. Todd Grisham and Alejandro Moreno will be up in Bristol to keep you up to date on all the scores and highlights. It's Sunday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. It's also live on the Watch ESPN app. And by the way, Sporting Kansas City tonight getting beat by the Colorado Rapids 2-0 to make this even more interesting. It is a crazy time in Major League Soccer. Pino and Brazil has won it back in a good area here. Spitting out of there was Andresa Alves, but Pino wins it back. He plays the ball towards the corner flag. Ramirez, Marta. Work to give and go. She felt she got obstructed. The U.S. win it back. Now it's Brazil who's won it back. Cristiano to Marta. Drives a hard low cross and Klingenberg was there to help steer it away. And cleared out of there by Sauerbrunn. What a delivery from Marta. As Brazil trying to pick up a second. What a ball across with such pace. So hard, you can't come for it. So hard to defend. It's so easy to knock into the own, your own back of your net. 
Klingenberg does well to just get her body in the way there. But, uh, a flash of brilliance there from Marta. Both teams taking turns gaining possession for Megan now. Marta cushions it down. Has drawn three for Megan. Shot is blocked by Morgan Bryant. Still Brazil. And they will get the corner now after some good work by Pauliana, who scored the goal against France in their recent friendly, who was joining in the attack. And let's see how they set up again. The United States, you're going to see those three. That was the, the zone. Only one post player. If Rapino's going to get on that no, near post, no post players, actually. And how they're going to handle this zone. Played out, crossed into the box for Amiga, trying to get up. Good patient defending by O'Hara on Christian. Kelly O'Hara, the 27 year old. Played at Stanford. In the 50s here in Seattle. Interesting game, Julie, because it's kind of evident flowed with one team applying pressure and then the other countering with pressure of their own. And, and the challenge for the United States when you're playing with just one high and Alex Morgan is Brazil likes to hold the ball so much you end up dropping into this really deep shape defensively. And then you have no one when you spring that's with her. So we're seeing her attacking mm -hmm. Alex Morgan on her own often. So U.S. has got to win the ball and then hold it to allow numbers to get up and support her offensively. How important is it to get her physically fit, feeling good, both mentally and physically, in the months approaching the Brazil Olympics? Well, what we know about Alex Morgan is she's fast, she's a great finisher, and when she's healthy, she's a total game changer. And there's not many like that in the game where you bring them on and they're going to finish in big moments with big goals. Did she change the landscape of the national team when she came on with the relationship with Abby Wanda? Yeah that pairing and I think it's what also helped Abby break the scoring record because she took a lot of pressure off Abby Wamba. Speaking of pressure here comes Brazil again. Sauerbrunn. She may be one of the most underrated. Of course we all know what a talented defender but she doesn't get mentioned as much sometimes but Absolutely professional attitude. Absolutely. She should have made that short list for FIFA World Player of the Year, I think, of that 10. Didn't make it on there, which I think was a slight. I watched her closely in training yesterday, and just the attitude, the professionalism. Not that everybody didn't have that, but something special. Hope Solo, who grew up in nearby Richland. Remarkably, Hope Solo in the U.S. only allowed 18 shots on goal in the World Cup. That back line for the U.S. That tells you something. And that was the real what a, story what before tournament. things turned, right? Oh, yeah. And then that's what kept them in the World Cup. Early on when they weren't getting a lot of offensive production, that back line was incredible. How about that? Beautiful ball from Shannon Box in her final game. Not expected to play the full 90 minutes tonight. Offside flag is up on the line. And the decibel level goes up. That's a good run, though, by Lloyd. You can see her just a fraction Ooh. off. But I, I, I wouldn't mind that. Tamira is the left back for Brazil. It made that dangerously close. Sauerbrunn. Those deep runs from, from midfield, so hard to, to defend. 
And that's that's exactly the run the United States needs coming out because they're playing that high line. Do that deep run from midfield. They're not going to track it as much. Johnston peeled off, found huge space, and she's offside. Didn't count it anyway, but it was a great idea. There was a huge piece of space that she peeled off into. Slinesman's been busy tonight. She's going to have a sore arm. Oh, again. I say that is on. That's two right there. That easily could have gone the other way. Jill Ellis up off the bench. The U.S. Soccer International Friendly is presented by AT&T, mobilizing your world, and in part by Emirates Airline, wake up to flying as it should be, and Heineken, open your world, enjoy responsibly. And there's a good look at this captivated crowd here at CenturyLink Field in Seattle. You are just tuning in three minutes in Brazil stunning the U.S. Monica the goal scorer the defender. You see her creep right into that zone. She's going to get in be behind Sauer run just for a moment and hope so though. Can she come out for that? It's coming in with some pace. But you see her hesitate like she wants to and she doesn't come for it. Second international goal for Monica. He plays in Brazil with Flamengo. Brazil has actually organized their own women's league now. Have had a, a draft down there and have got a large portion of this roster all playing in Brazil right now. It's pretty fascinating. And their residency, which is going to be in Sao Paulo. When they're not with their teams there playing. And I will tell you then. Too little, too late for Brazil. Oh, you're pretty opinionated. Oh, gosh, don't start me on it. We got a whole game to talk about that. I mean, this is a program that really just, I, I think, has underperformed for so long with the talent they have. Just not enough support from that federation for far too long. Pains me. Formiga. They came out to training yesterday. All the coaches walked off to one side. The ladies all went to the center circle and just started juggling the ball. Some of them had their hands in their pockets, and it was just amazing to watch the technique and skill that was in front of us. And imagine if they cultivated that a little bit more in that country. Whew. Here is Marta, who at 17 years of age, left Brazil to play in Sweden, and the rest is history. Five-time FIFA World Player of the Year. Plays at Rosengard. Plays uh, generally in front of a thousand fans there. The manager at Rosengard uh, coming out lately and saying uh, he wants her to shoot me. Ball comes in the box. Shot it wide. And that was Christian. Took a deflection, fell to her left foot. U.S. having the most difficulty on these set pieces with Brazil. A little flick that is missed from the United States, and that should have been a clear, and Christian just wide open with this gift on that back post. It's a familiar face if you followed the women's game. Joined the national team in 2003. Up for the World Player of the Year in 2007 and 8, Christian ended up third. Andressa Alves. Crystal Dunn will get called for the foul. 32 minutes in, it's Brazil with a 1 0 lead. Three minutes in, Monica, the goal scorer. Look at Andressa, one of the rising young talents. Brazilian women's football. But 
this for a first. That goal is the first in two years that has been scored inside 20 minutes against the U.S. The fans here have seen something unique. Christian, tremendous skill. It's driven in. Hope Solo will come out and collect. Tries to target Alex Morgan. Great idea. Dealt well at the back by Brazil. And that was Rafaela. Hope Solo does well to keep that one cleanly. Two Brazilians standing right there, ready to pounce. What a wonderful weapon, huh? Stick that long ball to Alex Morgan with everybody committed forward. Some trouble out wide again for the United States, and just the skill of the Brazilians. So good in tight spaces, one on one. Crystal Dunn. Boyd. Boyd will get there over the top towards Dunn. And Dunn with that touch is going to earn a corner. Interesting, and at the time I thought she's actually offside. <laughs> no flag goes up. Washington Spirit, the NWSL goal scoring champion and league MVP, Crystal Dunn. Julie Johnston comes forward now. Julie Johnston known on these set pieces. Five goals in this year, all on set pieces. Pino laces it in. Lloyd's header will go over the top. This is one of those balls that just keeps rising, and you can't get high enough on it. The number of new players uh, added. Two of them have made the game day roster here today. Janine Hinkle and Samantha Mewis. Christine Norn, Stephanie McCaffrey, Lindsey Horn, Emily Sonnet, Gina Lewandowski. Also, newbies that have come into camp here, Julian. Jill Ellis told us, you know, look, it's as important what they do in training in front of me as I assess them as it is if they get actual match time. Yeah, and she, she's been watching them this whole time as they've been training, and she will, of course, in between these games. She trained him hard yesterday. Lewandowski's interesting because she's one that plays at Bayern Munich and he has been trying to get her in the, the last couple of years and it's been difficult. Either she's been injured or the club won't release her. I mean, but that's the challenge of, of these victory tour games. With 10, with there's so many, four games in December, you don't have a lot of training days. And the good hard battling spirit of Shannon Box on display in her final match for the United States. The 195th appearance. What a story she is. She's wearing her married name on the back of her jersey. I love that image of her pointing, directing. That's how I always remember her. Really taking command of that midfield. And what a story Shannon Box to battling. The disease lupus uh, to continue to have this career. She just talked about all the trials and the ups and downs of being a, a professional soccer player, an Olympic and World Cup champion. I can remember seeing her on days and I'd go to training and we were covering an NWSL game or a national team game and she's just exhausted. And I'd say, how are you doing? And she said, I'm, I'm not having a great week you know, with my lupus. And I'm not feeling that well, but I'll be better next week. Talk about a battler who just fought through that. Had her cute Zoe, her baby, came back and just said, look, I'm going to give it another run. What's there to lose? Why not go for this last World Cup in 2015? Everyone thinks I'm going to be done. And this is what she's done nicely in the first half. Shannon Box has switched the point of attack beautifully. Morgan got held up, wanted a foul, won't get it. Dunn tried to play her, but Shannon Box has hit about four or five balls here to really Change the point of attack in the first half. Morgan telling Crystal Dunn just a little bit earlier on that. She has to pull off a run. 
Timing just a little bit off with that front line, and that's that Brazil back line playing so high. Johnston wins the header. Ryan keeps possession, so does O'Hara. Here's Dunn. Brazil with higher pressure here, Dunn. Breaking it down off the dribble, but runs out of room, and it'll be a throw in Brazil. 37th minute. Glenn Davis alongside former U.S. Women's National Team star Julie Fowdy. Boyd turns. Outside of the football to Rapino in full flank. Got Morgan in front of her. Megan Rapino tries to slip in Morgan, but it's cut out. Good defensive work by the goal scorer, Monica. Klingenberg will get a shot off. And it's parried by Luciano. And Luciana will collect it. Megan Rapino getting a lot of space, and that's when I think she needs to play that in. Earlier on, she waits a little bit too long, but that early ball bent in behind with some pace. Morgan's in. Fifth of ten victory tour games. Sunday coming up, it'll be at the Citrus Bowl. It'll once again be Brazil. And then in December, four games, twice against Trinidad and Tobago and twice against China. Opportunity to see the world champions. And by the way, the United States are undefeated in 100 straight home games. 100 straight home games. All the way back to 2004. I think the law of averages would catch up. 88 wins, 12 draws. For the U.S., though. Getting pressure there. Rafael. With Shannon Box retiring, with Lauren Holiday retiring, what a gap in that central midfield. Lloyd to Morgan. Throw in U.S. moment here now coming out is Shannon Box wearing her married name Spearman she will walk off Century Link Field a gold medalist a world champion and a US soccer legend and that was her husband Aaron what a moment. How neat is that moment? Ah, oh, it's so emotional. You could see her before the game, even emotional when it's your last national anthem, you know it is. Last time you get away when you walk off the field. Lauren Holiday giving her a big hug there. She's going to play her final match against Brazil on Sunday, along with Lori Kalupti. What a moment for Shannon Box. Gosh, she's given so much to the game, and will continue to do so. I know that. U.S. trying to get the cross, and it'll be another corner. Thirteen years has played for the United States national team. Eleven most caps in team history. Has gone through the triumphs, the trials, and everything with women's soccer in the U.S. Off the corner. Second ball is flicked out of there by Brazil.
done making a very important intervention on that far side of the field. As Brazil tried to break out after the corner. And they're in a good position here in a good posture. Pemeres' cross is blocked and Brazil will get another corner. Brazil seem up for the moment here tonight. And they came with some pace out of that. U.S. trying to get organized again off that corner kick. Dunn, you saw all the way on the other side. O'Hara covering. Such a favorable time to counterattack, isn't it? When you can get people forward on corners. Hope Solo only got beat three times in the Women's World Cup in Canada. Your post cleared by Rapino. Comes right back in. This time it's cleared by Morgan. Long range hit, and Solo had a beat on it all the way. It'll be a goal kick, United States. Shot coming from Andresa Alves. And I think that one was fine the whole way. You want that typically cleared high and wide so that you don't get that put right back on the face of your goal, but put my money on hope from 30 yards any day. Florida. This is Monica. Plays it wide now to Poliana. Back to Monica. He's also composed on the ball here. Great moments of possession and attacking play tonight. Ryan to Rapino to Klingenberg now. Time and think, you know, we've had some looks, but our timing, they're going to talk about that timing is just a little bit off. We've seen three, four flags called very close. Brazil with that high line. I think the challenge for them is how do you get those numbers forward from midfield to help Alex Morgan out up front? Last December, Brazil and the U.S. played twice in Brazil. The U.S. were up 2 0 in Brazil, and then Marta. Decided to produce a hat trick and Brazil beat the U.S. And they also drew in the tournament down. Here's Carly Lloyd now. Lloyd has made some space, drives a beautiful crossing. Luciana parries it wide. What a ball from Carly Lloyd to Alex Morgan. And every time the United States can get in line, they're getting success. And what a nice ball. She pulls it. Alex Morgan does well to get that on frame. And that's a good save by Luciana to react to that in the upper corner. What a sequence. Rapino off the corner now. Beautiful time to pick a goal off heading into the locker room. Comes to the near post. Johnson was making the run. Last touch by her. It'll be a goal kick for Brazil. Stay with us halftime. Coming up on the five-hour energy halftime report, we'll take a look at first half highlights. We've got a lot of interesting news and notes for you as well. And beautiful uh, piece on Shannon Box as well, who you saw come off in the 40th minute for the final time for the United States. Some of the Julie Foudy thoughts on Shannon Box at halftime. Marissa Alves plays it wide. Here's Marta. A minute of stoppage time has been added here in Seattle. Let me begin to sum it up a little bit, Julie, here this first 45. Very entertaining. Well, and if you're Brazil, I think you always got to go back to your game changer, Marta. How can you get her the ball more often? That does it here in the first half. It was three minutes in, a rarity. The U.S. conceding early. That's your goal scorer, Monica. Brazil has the 1-0 lead over the United States here, the fifth game of the victory tour. We'll take a break. We come back with more.
Welcome to the five hour energy halftime report back here in Seattle. And have you ever raised a flag? Well, the U.S. Women's National Team players did. Hope Solo, Julie Johnston, Carly Lloyd raising the flag on the iconic Space Needle. How's that for a wake up call in the morning? <laughs> Let's take a look at first half highlights. Something we don't often see, Julie, is the U.S. getting scored on early. And, and Monica just slipping in that seam for Brazil early on. And she gets a little push on, on Sauerbrunn there. Gets her off balance. Little nudge. Finds her space. And Brazil up early. And then uh, Alex Morgan here off the Crystal Dunn delivery. And early on, Crystal Dunn all over that right side. That's a tough one for Morgan. She's coming away from the goal. More chances for Brazil. Marta lacing this one in. And, and what a beautiful ball with such pace. It's so hard to defend. How often we see that actually knocking into your own net. And then this? again, Alex Morgan getting in the right position. And Luciana with a good save. She makes it look easy because she's in the right position. She's done well in there. Sighting there from Carly Lloyd with that acceleration out wide. All right, so Julie, I'm going to take you into the locker room right now. What's Jill Ellis saying to this team? I think she's saying this is a great challenge. This is exactly what we want. We don't want an 8-0 game, right? And I want to see who's going to step up. You see when the United States is successful, they're getting in line, they're getting around the outside. We saw it early with Crystal Dunn. We saw it at the end there with Carly Lloyd. How can they get that wide player forward? We haven't seen much of those outside backs getting forward in that first half. I think that's what you're going to find in the second half. We've got a lot of news and notes to come when we return. The United States getting a real test here tonight in Seattle from Brazil. Brazil has the 1-0 lead over the U.S. This halftime report is presented by Five Hour Energy. Welcome back to the Five Hour Energy halftime report. Uh, Pre-game here, Shannon Box being honored here. Tonight appearing for the 195th time, her final time, as she retires from an 11-year career with the U.S. national team as a gold medalist and a world champion there with her husband, Aaron, uh, and family. Mom and sister in tow as well. I love it. Daughter Zoe. Well, this is a fantastic career. So much trial, so much tribulation. And you look at the start of her career in 2003. She didn't play her first international cap until 20 days before the opening of that World Cup. And then makes that World Cup team. And then look at the career she's had since then. It's incredible. Three-time gold medalist. And then you thought she was done after that third gold medal in 2012 with her lupus. She wanted to have Zoe, of course, her baby. She comes back, and now she's a world champion on top of it. Fought lupus, the autoimmune disease, which uh, affects the joints, and, and, and had to manage that through her career. But, but what is it, Julie, you think jumps out to you most about your former teammate? She's, she's just a battler. You know, she's one of those players like Michelle Akers before Shannon Box that you want next to you on the field because she's going to lay it out there. She's going to leave it out there. It could be chunks of bone she's leaving out there, teeth. You know, she's just going to battle. And that's what you want in that holding central midfield position. You felt safe when Shannon was on the field. She finished very prideful tonight in the first oh, 40 yeah. minutes. It's, and it's great to see that she came back when everyone thought she was done in 2012 and she got that world championship. Lauren Holiday, uh, Lori Kolupny uh, also will be honored in Orlando on Sunday against mm -hmm. Brazil. Let's talk about the FIFA shortlist for the World Player of the Year. Is there really any discussion that needs to be done about this? <laughs> I, I think it's it's pretty it's pretty obvious it's going to go to Carly Lloyd. I mean, with 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 three goals in 16 minutes and a World Cup final, uh, I think she's going to take that one. And what a year she's continued! Uh, two hat tricks post World Cup in these last two games. She's been dominant all over the place and flying all over the place on top of that. So she's been tremendous. Let's uh, talk about the line that goes directly from the NWSL to the U.S. Women's National Team. Today, the Orlando Pride becomes the 10th team in the NWSL, Julie. Uh, wh what does that mean for this league now? I think it's a, it's a fantastic testament to what this league can be because you're seeing interest you're seeing and, and the challenge with these leagues is when you get the success of the World Cup and the Olympics and it's this momentary bump it's how do you capture that and and then spread it around for the rest of those three years and I think that's what this says is there's going to be momentum that carries on Alex Morgan it's looking like going to Orlando that was reported tonight joining her husband who actually plays for the men's team in Orlando so I think that's a lot of positives and I think actually this is just the first step 
first time we've gotten to a fourth year with the professional women's league, and that's a that's a feat in itself. Hey, by the way, the husband deserves a mention, Servanda Carrasco. Yes. Um, okay, so the NWSL expanding, but how careful does this league have to be in the future now? Well, I think they want to do it organically, but I think you're seeing there's a lot of interest from MLS teams, from other owners. You can see the momentum behind soccer in this country on the women's side as well. And uh, and I and I, I think the challenge, again, is is can you do it on a week-in, week-out basis? And I think that's what they're going to prove with this, that they can be successful. We've seen how, how well they've done in Portland. I think that's just going to be one of the teams that's that successful. Exciting news for the NWS. So we'll take a break here in Seattle, Brazil, with a 1-0 lead over the United States to halftime report is brought to you by Five Hour Energy. This U.S. national team match brought to you by AT&T. We welcome you back to beautiful Seattle, Brazil, with a 1-0 lead over the United States. The goal came early in the third minute. Glenn Davis alongside Julie Foudy as we get set for the second half. And this should be very interesting because the U.S. has not faced this competition on this victory tour, Julie. And you can see the United States loose, laughing. I think that's actually a good sign. I'm always in favor of that, Glenn. We'll see the reaction we get from this U.S. team here in the second half. Brazil has brought on Gabby Zanotti, the 30-year-old. So she comes in. It's still the only change for the United States was Tobin Heath coming in at the end of that first half for Shannon Box. And it's game on here in the second half. Brazil in yellow, the United States in blue. Here is Tobin Heath to Julie Johnston. tonight her 101st appearance so she's also had some significant milestones in recent times what a player Tobin Heath is now but, but not often that we see her in this holding defensive center midfield position and that's the gap that Jill Ellis is well aware of with Holiday retiring Box retiring how is she going to feel fill that holding defensive center midfield position how do you like her in that area I like her higher up because of her creativity. I think she's someone on the ball you want taking on in the box. She's not a typical, I'm gonna come run through a tackle and clean you out type of player. She's very skillful. Certainly do that, build it up from here, but high pressing Brazil right now on Klingenberg to Julie Johnston. And Brazil wins it back with this good early pressure here. They got it in the first half, three minutes in. Here's Marta now, flicks it out wide. Alves and hope Solo will collect this easily. Solo Rapino playing right here in the NWSL for the Seattle Reign. Flipped on by Morgan and headed back by Rafael. We, we talked a little bit in the first half about Brazil and the disappointment of going out in the round of 16 for the World Cup. But we didn't talk about their group stage. Group B, winning that group B handily. And I think actually that group ended up being a disservice for them because it was easier and it was teams that liked to play. There wasn't a physical fast mentality in those in those games like you saw against Australia when they get into that round of 16. And that's a great point because they played the Korean Republic, Costa Rica and Spain. And the physical side of it certainly was up with Australia. Wonderful point. And then you have Australia coming in having weathered that group of death with a lot of confidence. Sweeping tackle and a beautiful one by O'Hara. Timed it perfectly. And it's still Brazil Marta now. She works a give and go. But because of running at a defender, she earns a corner for Brazil here, and that's where they have scored the game's lone goal. Early stages here of the second half in Seattle. The United States have not been beaten in 100 straight home games here. And Brazil right now have a 1-0 lead. Headed away by Carly Lloyd. 
Andresa Alves plays it wide. Cross is blocked. Ramirez was getting forward, so the two outside backs pushing higher here. Fabiano knocked it into the box. Tackled away by Sauerbrunner. It'll be a corner, uh, be a throw in for Brazil here now. You can see there's so much talent on that Brazil team, technically. If they could just tactically get it right on all three lines, that's always been the challenge for them. Morgan. And the U.S. will get a free kick here. It really is remarkable that this Brazil team, given all the talent they have, Marta, five-time player, world player of the year, Christian, Formiga, and the list goes on, and yet they've never won it. They've never been able to get over that hump. Going peeling off now. Faelli will clear it. Carly Lloyd had a great moment in the first half, uh, whipping in some great delivery to Alex Morgan, only to force a great save out of Luciana in goal for Brazil. Here is Luciana. He's on the Pan American Brazilian team as well. Did not give a goal up against the aforementioned Korea Republic, Costa Rica, and Spain in Group E in Canada, which Julie referenced. Megan Rapino now uh, slow to get up here with a grimace on her face. When you think of all the games she plays on artificial surface, not only with Seattle, but here with the national team on this tour in the World Cup. We're not going to blame that one on the turf, though. Andressa Alves caught her. U.S. have sent a couple of players to warm up here now. Here's Crystal Dunn, Rapino. Brazil will get the throw. CONCACAF Olympic qualifying begins February 10th and it goes through the 21st in Frisco, Texas and in Houston. Eight teams, two groups of four. The top two from each team, each group advanced to the semifinals. The semifinals will be played in Houston at BBVA Compass Stadium. Two semifinal winners will go to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So we'll get a free kick here now. Fabiana was brought down tonight, appearing for her 66th time. Megan Rapino says it's a dive. This is where Brazil has had the most success getting in on the U.S. tonight. So dangerous on these set pieces. States in relation to where this ball is. They step, they worked on this in training, and the offside flag was up. We watched them do this yesterday in practice, and they're one for one. Clearly offside. Referee takes a while though to get the flag up. He's looking at her right away, and she didn't have it up at first. How risky is that, Julie, in, in your mind? It's very risky because if you have one player that's just a yard back, the whole line is onside. It's an, it's an aggressive line. It's rare you see that because most are content just to deal with the delivery. In fact, you hardly ever see it. In fact, I can't remember the last time I have seen it. 
that deep of an area of the field. And it worked. And I think this is the difference in this Brazil team from Vidal, their, their new head coach in the last year and a half. As you can see them, once they lose the ball, there's numbers. They're around it, they're swarming, they're hard to break down when you get the ball. More organized defensively. And again, you go back to that debate in, in Brazil. They want flair, they don't want organization. <laughs> They want the pretty game, the beautiful game. We've seen good glimpses of it tonight. Carly Lloyd. Monica stepped up, broke it up. Brian Johnston off and running is O'Hara. They try to pick her out. Brazil defends it. Brian gets it wide. Crystal done now. Well, some problems on the right side, gets a cross in. Luciana will collect it at the near post. Christian now combining with her midfield. Brazil circulating the ball here to the right now. Fabiana. Poliana driving forward yeah. now. Who plays in Iceland. Or Staryan. Pino Lloyd in front of her. And Monica just with the extending of a leg cuts the pass out. Morgan Bryant sprays it wide now. Rapino has been getting a lot of the ball here. Megan Rapino. There's a great run here. And Luciana off the line. Flying out of midfield, Morgan Bryant, who has done that on a number of occasions tonight. And there's that deep run that's just so hard to track. No one goes with Morgan Bryant, and you stay on side on top of it. That's the run the United States could make all night. Especially with that higher line, it's got to come from deeper. And we saw her do that a couple of times in the first half as well. And Brazil's not going to track that when it's that deep. Especially with the U.S. sitting two holding central midfielders, one of those has the freedom to go and take that risk. Juliana is hobbling a little bit here. This is this last play. We're going to freeze it here, and you're going to see Alex Morgan. She's right in the middle of your of your screen. She's going to have to make that near post run, and she's not going. Watch her hesitate. She watches. She waits. She waits. She's got to come at that hard because there's not much space Crystal Dunn has, and no one's making that near post run. Marta just creates space for herself and plays it out wide. Christian is in the box. More give and goes from Brazil. It's broken up by O'Hara, and it'll be a Brazilian throw-in. 58th minute. Look at Kelly O'Hara. There's a forward at Stanford and a 2009 Herman winner as Hope Solo picks that one out of the sky. The road to Russia for the United States men's national team will begin against St. Vincent and the Grenadines at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And it's Friday, November 13th at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. It's also live on the Watch ESPN app. So Russia now, the sights have been set. It starts with St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I'd like to see the men get back on track with that one. Brian O'Hara has crept up on the right side now. She looked off Crystal Dunn.
Marta. Spins and turns, and all of a sudden it's turned into a good attack here. O'Hara again. Sweeping tackle. Great recovery from the right back, Kelly O'Hara. Before Warren, Brazil was determined to come here and produce a good performance tonight, Julie. They've been impressive. And, and O'Hara and both Klingenberg on the outside, they put in their miles tonight. Done well, I think, faced up 1v1. That is so hard to defend with the skill of the Brazilian players. Lloyd, with Morgan in front of her, Klingenberg trying to support her. Lloyd got tackled late. Christian knocks it inside towards Marta. This is a first-time shot, but rather timid and easily handled by Hope Solo. Out of the University of Washington. Harley Lloyd with some words with referee Katja Koroleva. Felt she uh, kind of tackled uh, sort of after the play. Think some words with Andresa Alves as well. That's why. Crystal Dunn. And it's a free kick for the U.S. Tobin Heath tried to play it quickly. There's some challenges and some tough decisions ahead for Jill Ellis because the roster goes down to 18, including two goalkeepers for the Olympics. Pino set to take this. Can the U.S. get back in this off a set piece? Johnson makes a near post run, gets ahead on it, and it'll go out of play. It's a goal kick. You're watching the U.S. Women's National Team Victory Tour presented by AT&T. We are at CenturyLink Field in Seattle, Washington. And right now, Brazil with a 1-0 lead over the U.S. Glenn Davis alongside former U.S. Women's National Team star Julie Foudy. And the U.S. unbeaten in 100 consecutive home games. So this is interesting here in the 61st minute. And by the way, my partner tonight was voted the Pac-12 Women's Soccer <laughs> oh, Player no. of the Century. So congratulations, Julie. Oh, Thank you. What an honor. If you look at the names who have come through the Pac-12, that's special. It was mistaken identity myself, but... Yeah, somehow I don't believe it. <laughs> it is It is quite an honor. I mean, look at that team. Put down to play the United States. So it's got I will say that when you said the 100 game win streak, the last time the U.S. lost at home was in 2004, and it happened to be on another victory tour. And I happened to be playing on that field. I'm not proud about that one, Glenn. That was a long time ago. That's a streak that's at risk right now. But here comes Alex Morgan trying to change things here. What a tackle out of the middle from Rafael, number four for Brazil. That's better, though, by Alex. Aggressive first touch, aggressive second touch that takes him by. Two defenders takes her by. She has pushed. She is seemingly beaten a high line of defense a couple of times, only to be flagged for offside. So. If you're a, a betting person, you may believe that goal is going to come from Alex Morgan at some point. Carly Lloyd behind her, too. Right now, the U.S. so deep. You've got Carly Lloyd trying to push up, but then that midfield is a good 20, 25 yards behind them. Got to have someone in there saying, press, get forward. Got to put some pressure on Brazil. See if they can cough it up there. Morgan Bryan, O'Hara, Crystal Dunn, Brazil really. And good pressure on the ball here throughout this match at timely moments. 
Heath trying to get turned. O'Hara. Morgan Bryan to Becky Sauerbrunn. Brazil getting the sense that they could do something very special here tonight. Lloyd wins the header to Morgan. Back to Lloyd. Lloyd gets absolutely hammered. Or she may have been in with that final touch. And the U.S. is going to get a free kick here. Carly Lloyd just trying to drive right through the heart of the Brazilian defense. Catches the shoulder as well. Raffaele is late. Handball before she made the contact. Let's see what the referee calls here. She's going to pick up a yellow card. She will have to come off and get tended to, so Brazil effectively down a player now. Big set piece opportunity here for the United States. The captain, Carly Lloyd. Pino went for goal, went for glory, and off the outside of a right foot, it's a goal kick to Brazil. Hey, don't forget, Memelas Soccer Sunday presented by Audi continues with Decision Day. We'll have full coverage of the race for the Supporter Shield in Major League Soccer and for playoff position. Adrian Healy, Taylor Twelman will be on site in Kansas City as SKC hosts the LA Galaxy. Todd Grisham, Alejandro Moreno will be back in Bristol. These guys are going to keep you all up to date on scores, highlights. It's Sunday, 7 Eastern on ESPN, and it even gets more interesting because tonight's Sporting Kansas City gets knocked off by the Colorado Rapids 2-0. Brazil in possession here. Zanani. Trying to knock it back inside, cleared by Sauerbrunn. In what area tonight for you, Julie, has Brazil really maybe overperformed a little bit here to make this the game it is? I think you're seeing a Brazil team that's just more organized. They're getting numbers around the ball. We've always known Brazil has talented players. But there were gaps, and you're seeing less gaps. You're maybe not seeing the flair that you're used to seeing in Marta. It comes in spurts and in other players, but. Christian, wonderful job to hold it up for Brazil and get in front of Becky Sauerbrunn. U.S. just can't get a hold of the ball. And when you can't get a hold of the ball and you're just spent spending time chasing Brazilian players, that gets frustrating and most importantly, exhausting. They lost the ball. Well, they matched the U.S. grit and determination here today. Hands down. So is it really just the beauty of ball possession and managing a game we're seeing here? Well, I think you're seeing players that are more skilled, and that's the Brazilian way. Box is loaded up for Brazil. They'll get across it. Goes for everybody to hope so. A dangerous moment there. Brazil had three or four players in the box. Solo will try to stick it long now to Alex Morgan. Ball falls to Carly Lloyd. 
basically a three on two. They pick out Rapino. Rapino is onside now. They try and tie it up. Rapino shot. It's steered away by Luciano. Everybody at CenturyLink Field thought it was the tying goal. Marta now. Fabiana trying to leg this one down and does. Cristiano. Marta. Helped it on. Beautiful ball from Marta. O'Hara now. This is Morgan. Two superstars of the women's game. Rapino is going to get there. This hits the cross and lands on the top of the net. It'll be a goal kick to Brazil with Carly Lloyd streaking into the box. And here's the chance before that. Rapino wide open on that outside. Lloyd with a nice ball in. And for all the years we've talked about Brazil's goalkeeping being their Achilles heel. Again, Luciana, she makes this look easy because her positioning is good. Rapino doesn't hit it low enough or to the corner enough. But Luciana in the good position there to make it look simple. We are into the 70th minute. And again, just a reminder, the United States are undefeated in 100 straight home games. And are down 1-0 to Brazil. Crystal Dunn. You look at that Rapino chance, though. That's got to get low into the corner. United States getting set to make changes. Samantha Mewis is a holding midfield type getting set to come on, as well as Jelaine Hinkle. So two of these newer players brought into camp, Julie, are going to get a wonderful opportunity under real pressure here against Brazil. And Jalene Hinkle, this will be her first cap ever with the U.S. senior team. Seen her with the Western New York Flash. Had such a good rookie season. Dunn and O'Hara will go out. But you got to like this from a manager as well. Putting them into a situation like this. I do. I like this. And I like that you got Mewis who's going to come into that holding center midfield spot. That's one of the errors we've talked about. We'll see the adjustments made. Crystal Dunn comes out, assess her performance here tonight against Brazil. I thought very strong in the first half, getting in line. I would have loved to have seen that more in the second half. It's hard for her to get the ball, though, when the U.S. doesn't have the ball. But she just gives a pace that's so dangerous. The U.S. will come into central midfield. And Hinkle already involved here, and Tobin Heath will go out wide on the right. So welcome to the game, Jelaine Hinkle. <laughs> I was just going to say that. 1v1 right away inside your own box. Sound one got ahead on it. And Carly Lloyd's going to get called for the foul. So as you said, Glenn, Heath out wide. Mewis is going to sit in with Morgan Bryan. And Hinkle on that left side. I think this is one you just let play on myself. Brazil will get an early cross in, but it's hit straight to Hope Solo, who distributes to her right. Klingenberg has moved to the right back position now, with Hinkle coming on in the left back position. Hinkle played college at Texas Tech and had played, of course, on some youth national teams, but never for the full women's team before tonight. Great talent. I've seen her in the Big 12 under uh, Tom Stone at Texas Tech. Shooting opportunity to not hit that one. Now the other thing to consider here is the future also, and I know this is a big one, but maybe the pink elephant in the room. What's the future of Abby Wambach? Christine Rampone because it's a shortened roster here. These are two legendary U.S. players. And you look at 
just what you said, 16 field players is what you're given at the Olympics. That's a huge difference from the 20 you had for the World Cup. And Christy Rampone out tonight with another little injury, injured at the World Cup as well. And I think that's one of the things that is on the back of Jill Ellis's mind is do you take that chance that perhaps there's an injury? 41 at the Olympics for Rampone. But gosh, do you love her leadership and her experience and still what she brings to the game. And with Abby at 35, and you know, I think for a lot of that, it, it's it's really in Abby's hands. How much do you want it? How much do you physically, mentally want to be back out there? Because sometimes it's nice to just ride off into the sunset with a World Cup. I'm not sure I wouldn't take that deal. Tough decisions have to be made, though. There, there, there's <laughs> no doubt about much. it. And, and these are choices you want to get out in front of, right, if you're the manager? Yeah, exactly. And Jill, actually, Ellis has said that. Those are conversations she's going to have. What happened with the U.S. men's national team, Landon Donovan and Jurgen Klinsmann, too. Incredibly talented soccer men, both probably culpable, but in the end, Landon Donovan didn't go to the World Cup. U.S. Soccer International Friendly tonight is brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And by Heineken, open your world, enjoy responsibly. 100 game undefeated streak at stake here for the United States who are down 1-0 to Brazil in the 76th minute and here they come. Tobin Heath to Megan Rapina. Overlapping run from Hinkle. Brazilian back four has been very sound here tonight. This is Marta now. But you can just uh, change direction so effortlessly. Brazil will get it flared out wide. Cristiano's in the box. Zanotti, the second half sub. Here's Cristiano. Lloyd. With her head up in a good pocket of space. Morgan flares away. Rapino's in there. Rapino and the offside flag is up. U.S. trying to break out. I think Morgan's first instinct was a good one. Keep going wide. Take that defender. Let Carly Lloyd just run with it. She, instead, she cuts across right in front of her. States have been caught offside seven times here tonight, and a number of those were very, very close in the first half with Alex Morgan. So used to seeing the United States provide drama and late magic. Can it happen tonight here in Seattle? Great test for two young players brought on, Hinkle and Mewis. Marta, who's in the box, tries to bend it into that far corner. It'll be a goal kick to Hope Solo in the U.S. It's a good look by Marta. She sees she just has a little bit of a gap when she gets in the box here. And this is the presence of mind to know I can just find that little upper corner. How often does she do just that? Zilla have taken the U.S. out of the comfort zone for large portions of this game, but the U.S. will get the throw. Here's Rapino now. Earlier you saw Hinkle making that overlapping run. I like that. Haven't seen much of the outside backs doing that in this second half. Gonna have to start taking some risks. Nickel turns away confidently, knocks it back. Julie Johnston, 23 year old. Lloyd's header is steered wide. Morgan was making a run to her right.
77 international goals for Carly Lloyd out of Rutgers. Twenty three thousand six hundred and three come out here to Century Link Field in Seattle. Seventy ninth minute. They have yet to be rewarded with the U.S. goal as Brazil has been very determined here tonight trying to snap a hundred game undefeated home run for the United States. Rapino, laser like pass. Tobin Heath trying to lay it down to Mewis who was making the run in the box. I like the idea. This is such a nice ball because she knows Carly Lloyd is off sides that she plays across. But right there, I'd love to see Tobin Heath just a little more selfish. Right, that defender's coming across, pull it one time, cross the grain and slide it home. Martin is fouled in the 80th minute. She only had one goal in the World Cup via the penalty kick, Marta. Still haven't cleared the area. Heath comes back defensively. Still Heath. And Brazil has done well to win the ball back again. Mewis. To the corner flat, to Morgan. Luciana came out first. Here's Morgan. She retreats, crosses off the hands of Luciana. And somehow Brazil's going to keep this in play and not concede the corner. 81st minute. The U.S. have had their chances. And finally, you see a defensive holding center midfielder getting through. Mewis in on that one. Here it is. You can see her right in the middle of your screen. She's going to go. And I think this ball is on early right there. Mewis is on. It's just one too many touches by Morgan. She's got to play that across earlier because that's a really good run by Mewis. Rapino has won it. Keeping herself onside with Morgan. He's got Carly Lloyd at the back post. Rapino getting in there. Cross is blocked. It'll be another corner U.S. It is getting entertaining here in the 82nd minute. And it's just that last ball. The service is lacking again. That's a good run on the other side by Lloyd. She wants that ball, and Alex Caesar just couldn't deliver it technically. 23,000 plus on their feet for this corner from Rapino. To the near post, headed away by Brazil. Hinkle will knock it back. Sauerbrunn to Solo. He's a direct towards Morgan. way back to Luciana. The road to Russia for the United States men's national team. It will begin against St. Vincent and the Grenadines at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Missouri on Friday, November 13th, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Also live on the Watch ESPN app. U.S. now. Got it wide to Rapino. Some uh, good moments here for Samantha Muse. Tonight she picks up her fourth cap. Rapino. And cleared by Brazil. Throwing U.S. now in the 83rd minute. Well, the United States have had their chances, Julie. Yeah, there's some missed opportunities. Early on, we saw this one. Crystal Dunn finding 
Alex Morgan. That one tough because she's coming away from the goal, but a good look. And then here, Carly Lloyd finding Alex Morgan again near post. These are just not dropping for the United States. And this is what Megan Rapino is going to want back. Got to hit that low. Make Luciana get down for that one, right in her range. And the U.S. knows against a team like Brazil, you're just not going to get that many looks. Beatrice has come on, number seven for Brazil, who plays in South Korea. 21 years of age. Marta, incredible skill to come out of there. How did you just do that? Buis, the U.S. have won it back. To Hinkle, getting her first cap. Morgan, that's a good ball. Carly Lloyd, Rapino to try and tie it up. Sweeping tackle. Klingenberg now. Squares it in. Carly Lloyd off the underside of the crossbar and in. It's all tied up in one. good things that happened. First, this ball in by Alex Morgan, and then Lloyd finding Rapino, making that run, but look at Klingenberg. You can tell she's going to get in the box, and she's going to beat them. She's got this feistiness to her that says, give me the ball, and Lloyd reads it. She knows it's coming. What a good run by Lloyd just to get on the end of that one, but that is all on Klingenberg, taking on, getting behind, and taking the game on her shoulders. It's exactly what the United States needed right then. 78th international goal for Carly Lloyd. And it's tied up. Brazil coming back now with that shot that goes wide. With that goal now, there is preservation of this 100-game undefeated streak at the moment. And who will push for a winner here? 86th minute. Two hat tricks against Haiti, now a goal against Brazil in her last three. And a good look at Megan Klingenberg. Heather O'Reilly has come on for the United States for Megan Klingenberg. Bryant, onside is Morgan. Heath is hitting the far post. Still Morgan. And the U.S. will get a throw now in the 87th minute. Good response by the U.S. in these last 10 minutes here. Pushing numbers. Now you got Heather O'Reilly with fresh legs on that right side. She's going to come flying forward. Rapino, Hinkle now. This hit the cross. It'll be a goal kick Brazil. What a second half here. The U.S pushing to get an equalizer. Brazil has been so determined, stubborn today, has won the possession battle. Heather O'Reilly looking like she's lining up in that right back position, which you don't see very often. They may be going with a three back and pushing her higher. Looks like she's staying in that four back in that right back position. You know she's going to attack from deep, though. Played in one game at the World Cup, nine minutes. Also an FCKC, the NWSL champions. Heather O'Reilly. Came on in the quarterfinals against China in the World Cup. And here is Marta. Changed the game in a moment. Last time she played against the U.S. had a hat trick. Brazil at the top of the box now. It's cleared by Julie Johnston. But it's Marta again now. If I'm Brazil though, I want Marta higher. She's playing in the midfield. Heath with O'Reilly to a right. 
switches the point of attack. Tried to just drop it into Rapino. It gets there anyway. Rapino now. Crosses with her right foot to the far post, trying to spear it in was Alex Morgan, who threw herself at it. That's a good look by Rapino, because either way, you're either going to get a tip from your own teammate or a deflection from one of them. When you fly it across the face of the goal, good things are going to happen. Just a little too much pace for Morgan to get on the end of that one. But a great idea again by the United States. Whole U.S. bench, uh, aside from the coaching staff, up on their feet. Well, a little different than the Haiti games, Glenn. Jill Ellis is up. Yes, a little bit different here tonight. It's been an outstanding. <laughs> this is how a victory game. tour should be. Both teams digging deep into their reserves here. And, and this is exactly, as a coach, what you want to see, how the response is going to be when the U.S. goes down early, how the response is going to be when you put in the young players, Hinkle getting her first cap ever in such a, a high-pressure, 25,000-people stadium. And I think they've responded. I think they've done well. The young kids. Sam Mewis getting her fourth cap as well. Great move from a coach not to... To worry about blooding a couple of young players, Julie. And you got to think Jill Ellis is really relieved to get a game like this. And that's with all due respect to Costa Rica and Haiti. And it's kind of snapped everybody back into it here. Hickel steps up. Three minutes of stoppage time has been in. Hinkle into the box. Morgan has got space to get turned. We'll get the cross back. Straight up in the air. Still loose in the Brazilian box. Luciano. I like that the U.S. is still sending players, though. Hinkle stepping. Heather O'Reilly on the other side was high. trying to turn and make that pass to a streaking Beatrice. Shot is blocked. Fabiana with that effort. Brazil will get another throw here. And two minutes of stoppage time remains. Brazil trying to get another sub on. Trying to bring Erica. The ball will go to Hope Solo. Solo's got Tobin Heath. And Brazil will get a free kick. As the booze rain down here at Century Link. So Monica, the game's goal scorer, comes out here with little time left. Erica comes on. Brazil knock it forward. Rapino. The fans here tonight getting their money's worth at Century Link Field on this victory tour. And down goes Fabiano. momentum killer here. Julie, begin to wrap this one uh, up a little bit here, uh, starting with the U.S. perspective. Well, I think they got to be pleased with that response. I think the one thing Jill Ellis will look at is, is really the U.S. 
didn't get that response till the last 15 minutes of this game. Can they, starting the second half, take more risk offensively, get more players forward? You didn't see the holding center mid getting forward until the end of that second half. And I get it. You don't want to go too early and you don't want to spend expend uh, that energy, but you also got to take those risks offensively. You want to see that from the players. There's a good look at Samantha Mewis who came on, only her fourth cap, Carly Lloyd with uh, a finish off the underside of the crossbar in the 85th minute to tie things up. Great night though for Samantha Mewis. Good look at Tobin Heath and also Jelaine Hinkle who gets her first cap coming out as an outside back out of Texas Tech. You know, and that's really the debate that Jill Ellis is, is constantly trying to find the balance of, of the celebration tour and this preparation tour all combined. And how much do you start to look at with only three and a half months? How much can you bleed in that younger group? Or do you stay with the more experienced group, qualify for the Olympics, and then bleed them in after that? Tough decisions and some hard ones are going to have to be made by that woman, Jill Ellis. Rafaela comes on for Brazil. Marta, top of the box, Johnston steps up. It's still Brazil. Sauerbrunn clears it. Heath gets it wide. Here is O'Reilly, who is fresh. Morgan is onside. Still Morgan to try and go for the win. They square it back. They're going to earn a corner. The U.S. in hurry-up mode here. Going to take the corner, Megan Rapino again. Box is loaded up. Sauerbrunn has come forward. Is there a game winner here? It's hung up in the air. Luciana picks it off for Brazil. be much time left in this one that's it the United States battle back they get an 85th minute goal from Carly Lloyd after Monica's third minute goal staked out Brazil but Julie this is a highly competitive highly entertaining match and, tonight. and how about Megan Klingenberg the right back getting in line on the outside fighting through to find Carly Lloyd for the winner what a response both teams will take a lot out of this one here tonight in Seattle we'll take a break the United States, a 1-1 draw with Brazil, will come back to Seattle, Washington to wrap this one up. Welcome back to Seattle, Washington. The United States 100-game undefeated streak was at stake until this. And what a beauty of a run by Klingenberg to get across, to have the presence of mind to look up, and for Carly Lloyd to be on the end of that one. I love that whole sequence that it started with as well. Lloyd delivers again, getting her 78th international goal. Upcoming schedule here on the Victory Tour for the United States. It'll be this uh, very well-driven Brazilian team Sunday in Orlando. Two games with Trinidad and Tobago, two with China. And then uh, February 10th, Olympic qualifying will begin in Frisco, Texas. That'll do it tonight here in Seattle. What an entertaining game it was from the United States and Carly Lloyd, courtesy of Brazil. The final score, 1-1. Tune in Sunday, 7 Eastern on ESPN for MLS Soccer Sunday Decision Day. Coming up next, baseball tonight presented by Chevrolet. For Julie Fowdy, this is Glenn Davis. Thanks for joining us. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Our final score, US 1, Brazil 1.